Welcome to the Bring the Juice podcast film room. I am Lawrence Owen and I will be the guy going over some of the film rooms from here on out for Bring the Juice podcast just to highlight some players from the Colts to make sure that you understand what I see from these newly acquired players that the Colts get during free agency. Now today we're going to be going over that San Francisco 49er defensive tackle DeForest Buckner that the Colts traded a first round pick for and then extended him for a very large long-term contract. Today this is week one against the Buccaneers in 2019 last season and this is a play that's pretty much going to highlight just why DeForest Buckner is so dangerous and why you need to put two guys on him at all times because one-on-one you're not going to be able to block out DeForest the entire time and he's going to make a play in the backfield if you're not putting two bodies on him. Now this is a run play, this is a run off tackle. What's going to happen here is this ball is going to be high, hand a ball off to the running back. The running back's going to come up the middle to try to draw linebackers inside and then he's going to use his small quick speed change the direction to move this way and you're going to have you're going to see this right tackle block off the defensive end kind of push him out and the center and the guard are going to come up here and just kind of form a wall so that when the running back goes up the middle and draws these linebackers up they're not going to have they're not going to be able to get out of there because there's going to be a little wall here all right now these three guys the tight end the left tackle and the left guard they're responsible for these two guys and they make a ma- massive mistake they have a tight end and the right tackle go after the defensive end and leave the right guard on the defensive tackle, DeForest Buckner, all by himself. And the guard don't even block off DeForest Buckner the whole time. He's got a secondary job as well. His main job is to stonewall him, push him backwards, get him going backwards so that he can't have any momentum going forward, and then let off, release, and come up into the second level into the linebackers in hopes to springing the running back for a massive gain. Now, let's start this play off. You can see exactly what happens here. You got your man in motion. As you see the corner following the wide receiver, quarterback knows this is man coverage. He takes the ball, snap, bam. Okay, before the handoff has already happened, the tackle's already got the defensive end. You got the center and guard pushing that the UI back nose tackle and the guard has his shoulder into DeForest Buckner as you can see these two guys are pretty much worried as I said about the defensive end coming in from behind and capturing him because defensive end are known to have more speed than your tackles they're meant for that but as you see the guard has not pushed him backwards DeForest Buckner's leaning into this block. He's accepting it. And he's and he's putting willpower to willpower, strength to strength against this guard, saying, you're not pushing me backwards. Just force of will. And then, when the guard moved on up to the next, his next job, which was the linebacker, as you can see, the running back now His job is to move this way, right between the guard and the tackle. And once this guard hits this this linebacker, he's gone. Absolutely, this is all change change of direction right here. And under normal circumstances, even though DeForest Buckner is standing here, he has no forward momentum. He hasn't taken off yet. The running back is at a dead stop. They're three yards apart from each other. And the running back takes off this way. At any given time, normally, this is a win for the running back. This is going to be a massive play, not being able to be stopped until a safety touches him. As long as this block right here happens from the guard to the linebacker, it's just open runnings all the way down the field. Because 
normally defensive tackles do not have the speed and athleticism DeForest Buckner has for a 300-pound man. But because of his size being at 6'7 and and 300 pounds, he has this amazing speed to go along with it. And he can have change of direction just as fast as that running back. As you see, he stops, sized him up, and then as soon as he knew for sure where that running back, what direction that running back went, he just laid out in that direction towards him, wrapping the legs to make sure that that running back was going nowhere. This pretty much no to minimum yard gain because DeForest Buckner was not blocked early on by two bodies back here. Now, if this was anyone else, this running back had this, look, he, huge hole gone, right? But DeForest Buckner blows this play up just because of what he can do with his size, speed, and athletic ability. All right, now for the second play, it's going to be another run stop. We're looking at it about second and five. And Tampa's really just wanting to get some extra yards to make it a third and manageable situation. As you see, they are in a big formation. They got two tight ends. They got an eye formation with a fullback sitting in front. And you got nine men in the box on San Francisco. Now, as you can see, San Francisco's kind of cheating on this side. They got five guys on this side, four guys on this side. Winston sees this, so he's going to keep the play as is. Running back's supposed to go right up here. You got the fullback's going to come up this way. You got the running backs. They're hoping to split some backers here, pick up three or four yards, maybe even a first down on the run. Just run away from this side. Here's the forest. He's at the UI position instead of the three tech. All right, now, his job, what his plan is, is to try to sneak over here to get on this side. All right, get in behind the line and run along the side in hopes that the running back cuts back this way because he knows that San Francisco has got linebackers lined up on this side. So if he does cut back, he's got guys back here waiting on him. Now, in this situation... That does not work. It's not what happens. The running back continues to play. This is all about strength and willpower and positioning. How DeForest Buckner positions his body and use his size and leverage to get what he needs done, done. So we start to play. Now, as you saw, we're going to go back a little bit. That ball starts immediately. This center, all he's doing is he's going to step up here and the first linebacker that comes near him, he's going to block off. All right. Buckner immediately starts running this direction, knowing that he's going to, he's got contained back here. He has contained back here, so he's going to continue going this, this direction. He's got to try to beat that guard. Now... As you see his hands slapping around, that's keeping the guard off his hands. What Buckner wants is to put body against body. If Buckner can get that shoulder up against the chest of that guard, Buckner has won this matchup, believe it or not. Because of his size at 300 pounds and 6'7", and his strength, he'll have leverage to kind of maneuver the guard around if he can get up against his body. Bam, shoulders up against him. Now, as you see in this situation, there's three guys here. The center's looking. You got the fullback getting ready to come in and, and tag a linebacker. The center can either tag Buckner or tag the linebacker in the back. Buckner, however, has that free arm. Because he puts his shoulder inside, he's got a free arm for spacing. And he's 6'7", he's got a monstrous wingspan. He's able to create space with that wingspan of his. And as you see, he did that, right? I mean, unreal. Watch. That arm slowly coming out. Puts his hand on, on, the, sh on the shoulder, on the arm of that center. And pushes off to create that create just enough crease because he sees the running back in his sights. 
Still got the shoulder in, still leaning. You can see how, how that foot right here is planted and that leg. He's just leaning into that guard. And all he's got to do is take a step and just roll around the guard right into the running back. Which is what he's doing. He sees the hole. This guy here, you know, full back getting ready to hit that linebacker. And if he's not stopped, he's going to explode out here for a, a, a easy first down. Buckner continues using his shoulder leverage. One arm, bam, wraps him up two yards behind the line of scrimmage. Once he's got you in his grasp, it don't matter if it's one arm. You ain't going anywhere. Buckner's got you. Two yards. Two yard loss. And he started from here and made the tackle over here. Clean over. Got behind the line. Got his shoulder into got his shoulder into that guard swatted the hands away keep the guard we got the hand swat right bam bam got his shoulder in there create separation with that arm free it up bam right in the run lane and even with the guard pushing on him the running back and the guard together could not push Buckner backwards as a matter of fact as you see Buckner continued to push both these guys by himself backwards a couple extra yards as the play continued. This is why you do not block DeForest Buckner with one guy. Even in a scheme, even when the play is directed away from him, he is still going to make a play in the backfield if it's one-on-one. -on -one. Alright, so this is the third clip of DeForest Buckner. And first thing I want to say is check this out. Third click, same game. Buckner's playing defensive end. He's over here on the seven tech. We've seen him play three tech. We've seen him play nose tackle. He's over here on defensive end. Now, in this play, in this clip, we're going to show you why DeForest Buckner just being on the field makes the players around him so much better. Because he garners so much respect from the guys that are guarding him that sometimes they take a little bit too long to disengage with him when they're supposed to. This is going to be a stunt. This is going to be DeForest Buckner coming in here and lighting up the guard after Nick Bosa has already got contact with him. Nick is going to come this way. The center's going to be free. He's going to be watching somewhere else. But Nick's going to come up. They're going to engage these two. Now, what Buckner's responsibility is, he's going to come up to get the attention of the tackle. I mean, he's going to cut inside, make it look like an inside move. And the tackle's going to come on. He sells it beautifully. But instead of going inside as we play, Here we are. Now, he's cutting inside. Looks like an inside cut. The tackle's seeing him. Nick is already engaged with the guard. Armstead is going to win his one-on-one -on -one matchup already, but this isn't about this. Armstead's going to come up here. He's going to get half a sack along with Nick, Bo or, yeah, with Nick Bosa. I'm sorry. I have sometimes I have problems distinguishing between Nick and Joey. <laughs> I might not be the only guy. Sometimes I interchange the names. However, now, DeForest Buckner's cutting inside. And this tackles season. Now, he's, he, he's going to come in. He's going to just lay into him like he normally would to keep that inside move from happening. But that's not Buckner's. That's not what Buckner's doing. Buckner's coming in to help disengage Nick from this guard he's gonna come in and just lay into this guard and Nick is gonna step back and let this happen and then he's gonna cut back around on the stunt in hopes that because this is Buckner that the tackle will take just a little bit too long to recognize what's going on because of his respect of the forest there's the light up there's Buckner he, he lights him up. You see, he's got a foot up in the air. He's, he's going to take a couple steps back before he's giving up ground, no matter what. you got a 300-pound, 6'7 guy coming at you full speed, 
and you weren't ready for it right off the bat, you're giving up ground immediately. But as you see, the tackles still got connection with Buckner. Bosa now has free reign all the way around. Well, I want you to watch. I mean, watch this. He did. He pushed him backwards. Bosa now. The tackle did disengage, but he should have disengaged well before. As soon as he made contact with that guard, he should have disengaged. And he didn't. He waited too long. Now Bosa can go around the edge. It's a lot tighter run. Rather than have to go all the way around like this, he's just got to beat him around to the punch. And Bosa's already got uh, a step on him. And because... Because Buckner had pushed him back so far, and the tackle came up against Bosa on the outside, it's a free run to Winston for Buckner as well. And Buckner was supposed to be the sacrifice play on this play. He was supposed to sacrifice himself and take himself completely out of this play pretty much just to free up Bosa to get up on Winston. But instead, Winston now has nowhere to go. He, can't, he cannot step up to get away from Bosa and Armstead. He can't go outside because Buckner has got the middle and a free line to him. So he can't go left. He can't go right. This is a win because of how powerful Buckner was on the inside. Even though he was playing defensive end. Because of the power he has to push. And create separation with his arms. And with the respect that he garners. From linemen who are against him. He's able to make other players around him that much better. Now imagine this isn't Nick Bosa. Imagine this is Kamoko Ture. You know how fast Kamoko Ture is? How good of a bender he is? Right? This would have been an instantaneous win. Nick's quick, but Teray's faster. Teray would have probably been another yard or two deeper already at this point. Had that been Justin Houston with his experience playing on the D-line, who he's played multiple positions as well. So seeing these guys together will just be an outstanding situation for the Indianapolis Colts coming up. I can't wait to see this, the 2020 season. Now on this play, this is just going to be going about DeForest Buckner sitting in his 3-tech, which is where you'll most likely see him uh, most of the time with the Indianapolis Colts. And this is all about just him beating the guard one-on-one. -on -one. And I've said this multiple times, you don't want to block DeForest Buckner one-on-one -on -one because he's generally going to win that matchup. And here... He even has to deal with the fact that Nick does not take an outside edge rush, all right? Nick tries to use a bull rush to get around the tackle, which keeps the tackle here, which does not give uh, DeForest Buckner much room to get around on the outside. But that's what the direction that DeForest Buckner is going. Had they had better communication, this would have been a much easier play for Buckner to get done. But here we're going to see Buckner use his hands. He's going to use his hands as chopping motions to keep the guard's hands off of him so that he can keep separation. And then once the hands are down, both hands are down, he's able to put his shoulder into the body of the guard. And I've said this over and over, and you will always hear me say it, if DeForest Buckner gets his shoulder against the, against the, the offensive lineman, then he's won that one-on-one -on -one matchup. Because then all he's got to do is use his size and leverage to maneuver the guard the direction he wants and go wherever he wants to go. So let's play this. You see Kyler Murray asks for the ball. Buckner immediately, you see his hand goes down. He's got this hand coming up, getting ready to do some swats. Now, you see Nick starting to go outside but does not take a wide route. And because he's not taking a really wide route, there's still a little bit of space here. Now, he pushes into. And because of that, the tackle's not moving anywhere, right? 
and because he's not moving anywhere, Buckner's not got as much room. He's still chopping. You see this hands coming up. He's getting ready to get his hand on him. He uses his hands. Boom. Got his shoulder into him and was able to use his other arm to push the tackle away because Buckner wasn't able to move that tackle away far enough. Buckner used his other arm to push that tackle, as you've seen. Hold on. You see the hand up there. He's got his hand on the shoulder of that of that left tackle. He's pushing him away to create that space. He already got inside on the guard. That first step, once he decided which direction he was going and he had that shoulder in him, he knew which what he knew he won this matchup. All he had to do now was get enough crease in between that tackle and this guard to get around the guard. Now he's got a free line right for Kyler Murray. And Kyler's not an easy quarterback to sack because he's got some really good quickness. Murray at the last second season tries to step up into the pocket, but my goodness, six foot seven Buckner. He goes down out to those legs. You ain't getting away. Six foot seven. That's that's a long arm span. You know, that's 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 gonna be nearly ten foot from foot to tip of his fingers when he stretches out. He gets his hands around his ankles. Murray has nowhere to go. Let's look at this from a different angle. As you see. looking looking over the defense there it is now as I said earlier there's the swatting of the hands let's move this back a little now Bosa should have went really wide he should not have stopped here and then tried to come towards him he should have just kept going out to keep the tackle going out wide but he doesn't there's those swatting of the hands I was talking about from Buckner. And here Bosa is just trying to push in. Under normal circumstances, like I say, he should be going out. But because he doesn't, it makes it a very tight maneuver. Look at that. He stepped sideways. Buckner just sidestepped the guard. Took the guard off balance because of his push, of the way he was maneuvering the hands of the guard. Keeping the hands off of him. He wasn't able to keep his balance. He's got his other hand out because Nick has the, the tackle here. He didn't maneuver the tackle out deeper. He has to use his other hand to create that separation. That slim little crease for him to squeeze right between. Murray tries to step up into the pocket, but there's nowhere for him to go because Buckner's just so long and tall. And down he goes. Excellent play by DeForest Buckner, one-on-one. -on -one. You cannot block this guy one-on-one. -on -one. It's, it's just over and over. You're going to hear it said over and over and over by anyone who sit here and does these, these film rooms, including myself. You cannot block him one-on-one. -on -one. You need the center to come over and help. All right, for my fifth and final clip, we're going to have DeForest Buckner on the last position on the line that we haven't seen of this is the same season this is week 17 um obviously against the seahawks you know you got russell wilson there but he's lined up on this side so this is a completely different position you see buckner everywhere on the defensive line now huge benefit this is a very bad decision by the seahawks this running back should at least come up and chip DeForest Buckner. The right tackle, he doesn't have the skills to handle DeForest Buckner. He doesn't know how to handle DeForest Buckner. He probably doesn't even watch a lot of film on DeForest Buckner because DeForest Buckner is generally on this side. DeForest is over here, and what you're about to see is one-on-one -on -one DeForest Buckner against the right tackle. This is such a mismatch, it's not even funny. It's embarrassing. Number 65 is now no longer on the Seahawks, if that says anything. 
I don't know if it's this play that did it. I mean, uh, I, I can't really say that, but I wouldn't be surprised. Because this right tackle does something you should never do on the initial contact. Let's watch. Right off the bat, he's got his, he brings his hands up, but you see his fingers here? He's got some fingers here. He went outside on the shoulder pads on DeForest Buckner. You see how Buckner's hands are now? They're bent at the elbows coming up. He's going to put his hands right on the elbows of that tackle. And he's just going to push him straight up over his head. And that's going to put the tackle off balance. See, he's already lifting him up. He's just lifting him straight up. He's got his arms on his shoulders. He's lifting those arms straight up over his head. Pushes. Boom. Got him. It's over. Russell has, he better get rid of that football right now because Buckner's got a beeline for him. He messed up so badly because he put his hands up high and outside. And when you put your hands up high and outside, Buckner's just going to push those bad boys up, get you off balance, and he's going to be, have, like, at 6 7, somehow he got under the hands of an offensive lineman. Under the hands? That's that's not a good position to be in. He got him off balance, pushed him back. Size, speed, strength. Free run right at Russell. Russell ain't got nowhere to go. He just drops. He's like, screw this, man. I'll give myself up. I don't want to get hurt. That's 300 pounds of defensive lineman bearing down on me because number 65 does not have the correct positioning of the hands on him. So now you see that every once in a while, Matt Eberflus can line Buckner all the way up on a complete opposite end of the defensive line to keep the opposing offense guessing on where he might be. And when he does that, one-on-one -on -one against a right tackle is just so unfair, right? I mean, come on. This is going to be a really fun, fun time for the Indianapolis Colts. And I hope that you really enjoyed this breakdown of DeForest Buckner, this film room that I have. If you enjoyed my stuff, you could follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Colts underscore law. And I also have my own YouTube channel, Lawrence Owen. But I am having a great time doing these film breakdowns also for Derek and Cody right here on Bring the Juice. And until next time, have a good one.